Chapter 16 has just the one uh, objective. Know what collision theory and activation energy have to do with reaction rate. So collision theory um, is obviously all about how much po uh, particles are colliding. But there's really three things, three requirements for a product to form. What's the first thing that has to happen for there to be any chance of a product forming? There has to be a collision. There must be a collision. It has to be between the reactant particles. So it has to be between the two reactant particles that you're trying to combine. And then what has to be true when they collide? What has to be true about that collision? There has to be the right orientation. So that's collide at the right spot or correct orientation. And then the third requirement, they must have enough energy. A lot of you say it must, um, you use the word activation energy in there. It has to have an energy equal to or greater than active ener activation energy. So it must have enough energy. It has to exceed the activation or required energy. So how can you speed it up? What can you do to change those collisions? You can increase the number of collisions, you can increase where they hit, or you can increase the energy. So yeah, temperature would be one. Increase temperature. It always works to increase the rate. It doesn't always work to increase the equilibrium. Sometimes it shifts your equilibrium left. So if you increase temperature, you actually increase two of these. Both number of collisions increases and energy of each collision increases. So you have two chances, two of the three improve. What else can you do to speed up the reaction rate? What's that? You can increase the concentration of any uh, liquid reactants, the reactants that are solutions. If it's a solid, you can't increase concentration. If it's water, you can't increase concentration. But if it's a solution, you can. What's the third one you could do? What was that, Risa? Yeah, increase the surface area. If it's a solid, crush it up. When you increase the concentration of any solution, you have more reactant particles in the same volume or space. So that's going to be more collisions. And when you increase the surface area of any solid reactants, you don't have more reactant. You just have more reactant exposed. So you have the same amount of reactant, but more particles are exposed. So collisions are more likely. So temperature is really uh, your best option because it increases the number and the energy of the collisions. Two and three just increase the number of collisions that are likely to happen. There's one other way to speed up reaction rate. Anybody remember what it is? Yeah, catalyst. And what does a catalyst do?
Okay, remember, catalyst lowers the activation energy. It doesn't change your number of collisions. It doesn't change the energy of the collisions. It doesn't change the orientation of the collisions. So, you know, you're the little kid throwing the bean bags at the target. What the catalyst does is it moves the target closer. It makes the hole, the opening, bigger. Okay, it just improves everything for you. It gives you extra bean bags to throw. So now if you can't get the bean bag through the hole, there's just no help in you. Right. So a catalyst lowers the activation energy required. So same number of collisions, but more of them will have enough energy. So activation energy is the minimum energy. Oh, the stupid formatting. It does this all the time, and you can't make them go away. So activation energy is. the minimum energy a collision needs to form product. Or that's what we say is being successful. Successful collisions make product because that's the goal. So lower activation energy means more collisions are successful. But a higher activation energy, like when you use an inhibitor, means fewer collisions are successful. And there's actually times we want to slow reaction rates down. Again, with uh, storing food, um, with certain diseases, we want to slow it down because we don't know how to uh, cure it. 